Hey guys, still here and welcome to Shipyard Champions. This week, I might just have an opportunity to catch up to the rest of the guys because, well, I entered mid-season and there are a lot of points that are to be had this week. The situation this week is fairly straightforward. Design a ship of your choosing, ship type of your choosing, and have 10 or 20 of them face off against the same amount of AI ships of the same ship type Sinking the enemy ships as fast as possible. Choose your own tech year, range, nation, weather and time of day. So you get a lot of leeway here. Um, you will have 10 or 20 ships of a chosen type. The enemy is going to have an equal amount of those ships. Unlock hulls is off. There's no testing your ships beforehand. Crew training must be set to 50 or lower. This is important because it's going to impact accuracy quite a bit. No ship may have over 20 torpedo tubes tiebreaker is the battle timer now when it comes to scoring this is going to be good plus one point for every ai ship sunk minus one point for every one of your ships lost so lose a ship you lose a point plus one additional point for every ai ship sunk if all of your ships are on ai control the entire battle so points are doubled on a 10v10 uh, this means if you don't want to turn the video, or rather your production, your battle, into a slideshow, some PCs might not be able to do a full 20 versus 20 and still have it uh, get a reasonable amount of frames. So that is why you can also do a 10v10 and the points are doubled. I'm going to do that 10v10. I'm going to make this the brawl that ends all brawls. Um... We're going to go to 1940. I'm going to set my range to 5,000 meters. And we're going to go with 10 battleships against 10 battleships. Um, of course, actually, it's going to have to be the Brits. I mean, the Germans versus the Brits in 1940 at 5,000 meter range. Due to some mysterious fog, these guys were able to get this close to each other. And now they're going to have to duke it out. One party will survive. The other might take some casualties but should come out on top. And I really hope it's going to be the German Reich. Now, um, shirt designs is off. Weather, let's set that to clear. Daytime, I'm going to set that to morning. I don't want to have any nighttime difficulties. I'm going to make a big-ass brawler of a battleship. I'm going to put them all on AI control. Here we go. All right. Heimdall. No, 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 no. Thor. Displacement. Yes. Displacement, more yes, 158,043 tons. Cadet level crew, no, regular cra uh, regular crew training. Um, we're so close to each other that I'm thinking I might not need a whole lot of speed anyway. Because my ships likely won't be maneuvering that much to begin with. I do want this, diesel electric auxiliary system. It's going to give me the best amount of water pumping... It's going to give me the best amount of ship repairs, and that should allow the ship to maintain her, well, presence a little longer. Uh, these things are already starting at 1.7 billion a pop. So you're paying a hefty, hefty price for these. Um, when it comes to the armor scheme, normally I would go all or nothing. Because you get slightly less chance of engine damage, you get slightly less chance of ammo detonation chance. But this Citadel 4 gives me more resistance and more armor strength. And it's more, let's say, dealing with shallower shells. Uh, yes, you get a slightly higher flash fire chance because you get less reduction. But if I just pick like Barbette 5, I should be able to mitigate that circumstance. All right. Modern tower. Secondary tower. Um, normally I would attach this, but I think this looks better. Whether I'll actually use this is going to depend on what type of guns I can fit there. Now right now I'm looking at 140, oh, sorry, 133,000 tons. So I've got 25,000 tons for armament, which is uh, a fairly nice amount. I'm thinking, however, I might need to start with setting up the gadgets and gizmos. I don't care about acoustics, I don't care about radio, I do care a lot about my armor. Because I'm going to have to hand these guys off to the AI, and the AI generally isn't very good at controlling ships. At least, that has not been my experience. 
Superstructure, three inches of armor. Um, in the worst situation, the AI is going to have like 20 inch guns, which if they give them like all the AP, uh, that would probably be super heavy shells with TNT four and I think two powder two. That means at 5,000 meter range, I'm going to have to protect against 169 inches of armor. There is no armor in this game that's able to do that. Where can I max this out? 35 inches of armor. Plus 167%. So yeah, basically it means I'll not be able to deflect any of this. Let alone all the different angles that we're going to be taking into account. So using this is going to be utterly unfeasible. Um, I'm going to throw on a healthy amount of armor. I am not that likely to really make all of that work. Because... Well, let's say they pick a more reasonable type of caliber, like maybe 15-inch guns. At 5,000 meter range, I'm still going to have to defend against 77 inches of armor, which is such a massive number that I'll probably not be able to deflect that. So, what does that mean for this ship? Uh, let me throw in a funnel before I forget to do so. There. Engine divisions, 81%. It's fairly bad. I mean, I don't need to go anywhere in a hurry. Oh, I still got a couple of bonuses. Speed is only 25 knots on this thing anyway. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to fire fast. Really, really, really fast. And the enemy has pretty much the same issues that I do. They are not going to be able to stop shells at short ranges. Let's say that some of my ships are going to be like maybe 10,000 meters apart. That still gives me 49 inches of armor pen if I stick to the 13 inches. And these are Mark 5s. 14 inches Mark 4. I'm going to go with 13 inch Mark 5. Uh, it does look a little out of place on these ships. I'll grant you that much. Like, <laughs> the ship looks a little impotent this way. Um, so, how are we going to fix that? We're going to add on more guns. Push this forward, throw on another turret, throw on another turret. And there. I don't think I'll be able to do quite the same thing here. That's fine. Now, normally I would not do this. I would not take a couple of buzz saws and start chopping off barrels. But in this case, I will happily make an exception. For the simple reason that I'm right on top of the enemy. The only thing is, I don't want my uh, amount of pen to drop too low. And right now I'm looking at about 53 inches. Uh, reload's 29 seconds. If I take... If I take 10% off the barrel... Well, it's still going to be a decent amount. I'll fire every 23.8 seconds. That should be good enough. I, however, do not want to fire that. I want to fire... What if I give them capitalistic HE? That's... Hmm. I'm going to hand off all control of these ships to the AI, so I better make sure that the AI knows what to do with these things. So if I give them max AP, they're most likely going to be using AP anyway. And I think the AI has a tendency to prefer the, the, the armor-piercing shells anyway. So my concern is they'll deflect... If I go semi-ballistic, I'll still be able to pen 24 inches of armor at 7.5 km range, but that's not enough. If I go standard, I'll be able to pen 38, sorry, 35 inches of armor, which should be mostly sufficient. Okay, uh, we're going to go with, with a lot of secondaries. Um, can I fit 7s? No. I believe this hull limits you to 5-inch calibers on those little platforms. These fire every 6 seconds. Of course, we're going to adjust that. Now they fire every 4 seconds. Will they hit something? Yeah, most likely. Most likely. We're just going to make sure that they fire so much ammunition, so many shells at the target... That the thing is not going to have a choice but to get hit. I'm... 
very hesitant when it comes to torpedo usage because the AI tends to torpedo itself more than anybody else. So I really don't want that to happen. Let's go with six inches of armor, superstructure, uh, 10 inches here. Wow. Pitch is <laughs> fucking awful. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, 15 there, 15 there, 20 here. Pitch is still awful. It's not good. There, generation 3 radar, please. Um, super heavy shells, yes. Super heavy HE shells for the secondaries, yes. Am I missing anything? What if I put them like 20 knots? There. I mean, I'm not gonna go anywhere in a hurry anyway. I'm right on top of the enemy. I don't need to close the distance. I don't need to try and minimize the time that I spent getting to the target. None of this stuff matters. Three inches for good measure. These three inches fire every three seconds. That's fine. Can they pen anything? Not really. My plan is to just overwhelm as many targets as possible with HG from the secondaries and blow other things out of the water with AP from the primaries. Now, I still got 3,000 tons. Um, let's say I want to have another 8 inches of inner belt and another 6 inches of secondary inner belt. Conning tower, 20 inches of armor protection. I'm going to get 20 inches on... No, sorry, it's maxed out. On the turret... We get 15 here, yes. Can we get... I don't care about deck armor, because I'm so close that the shells are definitely not going back to the deck. 16 inches main belt. Sorry, 20 inch main belt, 16 fore and aft. This kind of perfectly balances the ship out. Anything else I can get? Better steering? Again, arguably, it doesn't matter, because my ship's not going to get out of the way for anything. One simply doesn't steer 158,000 tons on a dime. Although, to be fair to the ship, this thing has a turning circle of 718 meters. That is actually pretty respectable. Huh. Okay. <clears throat> Course change time, 80 seconds. Yeah, if the enemy brings a lot of torpedoes, I'm just going to get hit. But with an anti-torp 5, torpedo damage has been reduced by 60%. Triple hull bottom reduces the torpedo flooding chance by another bunch. Reinforced bulkheads make sure that flash fires aren't as likely. I should be fine. And why am I saying flash fire? Well, sometimes a torpedo strikes alongside your, or let's say underneath the turret. Sometimes that causes a flash fire. And your turret decides that it doesn't want to live anymore and jumps off the ship. Alright. Um, no, that's too much. That is too much. The only concern that I really have is that my three inches are going to get shot off. But, well, let's be honest. A lot of parts on this ship are about to get shot off. So, I'm not sure if one or two more three inches are really going to make anything different there. That's a bit heavy. Alright. Alright. We're going to put Thor to the test. Thor and her nine brothers. Because with this, you don't call it female. And yes, yes, yes. I know in the comments. You might, you guys might go, oh, no, no, no. Actually, ships are female. Yeah, but sometimes they're not. Prepare for battle. Start the battle. Pause. Okay. Um, I'm going to put all my ships to AI control, and you guys get to figure it out all by yourselves. Uh, this is going to be... <laughs> less than favorable, because everybody's sneaking up behind me, so I still need to change direction, allowing all those secondaries to fire. What are these British warships? Aw, oh, these are fairly cute, aren't they? They got 18.3 inch guns. That's a lot of firepower. Uh, beyond that, they're not too big. Which is kind of why I picked the British. Because I know that the British don't really get really big battleships. Or at least they didn't used to. They got secondary armament in the form of 
one 18, 3.8, a couple of 1.4s, another 3.8, and a couple of 4 inches. I fear no British warship. I fear no man. Let's take a couple of screenshots before everything starts burning and melting and shit. And press the play button. Again, I'm not in control of any of these ships. You can see they're all set to AI. Um, and I'm just going to have to admire the fireworks and watch the frame rate drop. Good lord, could you hit something? Oh my god, they're firing HE? Why are you firing HE? Why are you like this? Oh, it might actually put this thing on fire really quickly. That's 15 fires, 16 fires, 17 fires, 18 dead. <laughs> That's one. Oh boy. That's one. That is one. Okay. are my ships doing? Healthy, healthy, healthy. I've done 2.5k damage. I've taken 314. All ships. Set fires. Are you guys actually trying to turn around? Yeah, you are. Schwaben's turning. Thor and Hildebrandt are turning. But look at that. All my bow turrets are just pointing at the bridge. They're not able to do anything. Looks like Odin and Schleswig-Holstein have taken some damage. Odin is taking a lot of fire from those 18s. She's hurting. But the amount of damage that she's been able to deflect is pretty insane. I'm really hoping I can snowball the British. And by that I mean put so many fires on these ships and start taking out 2, 3, 4 very quickly so that their firepower gets reduced by a substantial margin. It looks like this ship might not need too much more. Oh wait, we're firing AP now. There goes another one. That's two Brits down. I think we might not really be able to pen this. Are you still firing at the trailing warship? Yeah, you got... <laughs> you got 2% chance to pen that. <laughs> cool. Overpens. Health check. We're pretty much okay. The only concern that I have is that we're getting a little too far away from the enemy ships. And as such, until my ships turn around, I'll not be able to deal a whole bunch of damage because my 5-inchers can't fire. This guy has 10 fires and a lot of floodings. Boink, boink, boink. Floodings, destroyed secondary guns, more fires... This ship is not doing very well. Yep. That's three dead. That is three dead. The Odin is mostly fine. Yeah. Have you suffered any catastrophic damage? Because I'm seeing like one red part. Doink. I don't care about your puny 18 inch guns. Yeah, I think we lost a five incher. Another 5-incher there, but the rest of the ship's perfectly fine. Just the sheer volume of fire. Look at this guy. Pause. That is troubling. <laughs> I would not want to be on the receiving end of that. You might be able to stop some of it, but you sure as hell won't be able to stop all of it. We're still firing over piercing, and the secondaries are still not in range. <laughs> oh, if only I hadn't sawn these barrels off. I probably would have been able to hit this guy. Boom. Jesus, dude. How fast do you reload? 23 and a half. Yeah, okay. So the crew doesn't actually change that much. Damage done. 21k. Damage taken. 4 and a half. 
but it's not really showing you what's going on because I've already taken out a couple of British warships. They've done a substantial portion of damage to the Odin at this point. Jesus. But they haven't actually destroyed any of my warships yet. Which means that they're rapidly going to start diminishing their DPS. I mean, they've lost three ships and they're about to lose a fourth. So this means the enemy... Well, they might still take out the Odin if they keep at it. But the amount of damage that the Odin is going to take is going to get increasingly less. Just look at that. Props to the British warship for not instantly getting melted by that. Accuracy of our ships, 49%. The British even higher at 50%. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, this thing is 158,000 tons. It's pretty difficult to miss. Especially since I'm not moving very quickly. Ricochets. Odin still hanging on at 81%. Schwaben. All these secondaries are just useless. That's unfortunate. Are you switching fire? Yeah. Everybody has decided to take aim at a new guy. And it's not really ideal because it means that this guy, girl, although still damaged, is capable of firing back. Not very accurately, because they got a 50% damage and stability, and they're maneuvering to try and fall back into the formation. But they still have guns. Although they might not be able to fire those, because I don't think they got the elevation for that. These poor Brits. <clears throat> I almost feel sorry for them. Almost. Odin, 80%. We're fine. We're fine. Ricochet, ricochet, ricochet. One flooding on her stern. Um, she's blocked 817 impacts and she's ricocheted another 98. The only shells that did some real damage has been the 18 inches. But really, not by that much. Now, the tiebreaker for this one is the battle timer. I'm currently looking at 7 minutes. And I'm thinking at this rate, I'll probably take a minute or 20 in order to destroy all of these. This guy is dead. How much flooding do you have? Or rather, how much buoyancy? She's still shooting back. Props to the Brits. Ah, we finally have ID. Uh, this is the London. <laughs> Coming in at 67,100 tons, moving at 32 knots, and these guys reload in 51 seconds. They're Mark 3s, and I really don't think that they're going to be very accurate, or that they're going to be very effective. See, if my ships are broadside, then yes. Then my armor belt is not angled, and they take a lot more damage. I was really hoping that this was going to be like the brawl to end all the brawls. The problem is, I'm too far away from my secondaries to do anything useful. Come on, AI. Just pick this target and finish it off. Because now we've got a couple of semi-healthy warships. Oh, now you're going to switch to the Colossus? That is not a good use of your resources. Bulkheads, standard. Spacious quarters. Ship is getting 83%. Sorry, 84%. 81, 77. Armor quality? Group 5. Yeah, my armor is just a lot better. But seriously, take out the London. Because she was hanging on for... Oh, sorry, the Venerable was hanging on for dear life. She has 0.5% buoyancy. Just put her out of her misery. And do it quickly. Now, I do very much consider that my other fellow content creators are going to have pretty much the same plan. Or something very similar. So they will likely also get a ton of points. 
Um, so far, I have a perfect score, but the battle isn't done yet. So things can still very much change. We're switching fire again? Now we're hitting the Repulse. Look at that. You got the Venerable on almost no health. You got the London, which is almost dead. You got the Colossus, which is half health. Thank you. There goes the Venerable. Now we're going to focus our firepower on even fewer ships. The Erin is still pretty healthy. And then you got the Victorious, which has taken some flooding. Uh, yeah, that's all of them. The other three are sinking. Look at that. This is the Bar Fleur, which has only taken a bunch of fires. She was not able to deal any kind of damage. Uh, the Africa did 300, and the Hercules did 346. Venerable did only 82. Victorious has done 2.9k. London has done 1400. Implacable 2200. Repulse 2400. Colossus 1300. A couple of shells ricocheting there. Again, you might be able to stop some of them, but... Wait, the three inches are in range, but the five inches are not. Oh, fantastic. Health check. Done. Come on. Yes, couple good pens on the Victorious. Reduce that accuracy. Although, <laughs> damage instability won't save me here. I'm just going to have to flat out kill this guy. And we are. We are. Schwaben seems to be the focal point. At this rate, I might actually lose the Schwaben. Because her hull is getting absolutely peppered with shells. She's already lost 20% of her crew. A little concerned here. Guys, I need you to start taking out ships faster, because at this rate, we might still lose one. Hanover's healthy, Kaiser, Thüringen, Nassau, Odin, Hildebrand. Wait. I thought I had a ship somewhere in the back that was taking a lot of damage. Is that the Schwaben? No. Oh, that was Odin. Odin was taking all the fire. And she's now far back in the formation, so she's fine. All my ships have once again decided to let Victorious, Repulse, and Implacable live. And instead decided to focus fire on the Eren. Not a good chance. Or There we go. Victorious is down. And this ship is taking a lot of fires. She might succumb to overwhelming fire. She has 13 fires, 15, 17, 18. She's probably dead. There we go. Schwaben down to 59% structural integrity. So they got, what, four ships left? Yeah, four ships left. All right. Come on. These guys are all very badly wounded. Boom. Jesus. <laughs> Look at that. The five inches haven't done any damage. Zero. <sighs> Implacable's down. Repulse. Oh, she flash fires. Come on. What are we going to shoot? London? Why her? Yeah, all AI ships. No, one division is focused on the Repulse, two are focused on London. London is flooding, although not quickly. And Repulse is badly burning. So much so that I think she might succumb to her fires. Just the sheer amount of them. There she goes. Extensive fire. I think I wasn't too far off with the 20 minute remark. London is flooding badly now. Yeah, she's gone. Losses. 
Last man standing. Last man standing. Not for very long, though. Are you trying to pick up survivors, or have you lost your rudder? Good lord, dude. Thirty-one percent structural. Lots of fires. Yeah, this was a bit of seal clubbing, wasn't it? Destroyed main tower. There goes any further damage control efforts that you had going for you. Flooding. Engine 3 damaged. More flooding. Fire. Main guns. No, main guns are still functional. Thor, why are you 20 clicks out? At this rate, you won't be able to shoot pretty soon. Ten percent structural time, nine thirty seven. Nine percent structural. Why are my battleships this far away? Fifteen clicks out. Come on, guys. Two percent. Nine thirty seven rounds. Done. 93659. I have lost zero ships. So, plus one additional point for every AI ship sunk if all of your ships are on AI control for the entire battle. Points are doubled for a 10v10. So, <clears throat> I have taken 10 ships out of the fight. That's 10 points. I have lost zero ships. I have put all ships on AI control for the entirety of the battle. So, that's 20 points. And they're going to get doubled. So this time I have a perfect score. I scored 40 points. I look forward to seeing how the other guys are doing it. Thank you for watching this one. Be sure to check out the other links down below in the description. Because that's where you can find all the other contestants. And we're going to see if I'm the only one with 40 points. Because I rather doubt it. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you soon for more.